Hi, this is the Quadrilidian concept. Before I explain exactly what's going on here, it would probably be helpful to watch my video on double mode theory if you haven't already. I'll give a quick review, but just about everything I'm about to say will be based off of my work in that video. So real quick again, what are double modes? Double modes are a two octave microtonal expansion of our traditional modes, where octave two is half flat of our prime octave. This evolution of, for example, Lydian to double Lydian, modeled here in 31 tone equal temperament, allows us to leverage the shimmer effect we observe in the falling diasis interval. This provides us with a robust theoretical framework to emulate tuning effects found in gamelan, vox humana stops in some organs, or even honky-tonk piano tuning within a Western structural context. You can think of this concept as a way to kind of insert an acoustic compositional chorus pedal into our music at will at a hyper-specific level of arrangement. Rather than applying this shimmer effect exclusively on a global level like a chorus pedal would, double mode theory can be highly localized. We can use shimmer only on a single note of a chord if we wanted to. We can treat it like ornamentation to spice up our harmonies. Or we can use it structurally to pivot from neutral chords to half flat super major chords and beyond. As you can probably tell, there's a bunch of really cool but unintended consequences when it comes to double modes as well, namely in the expansion of our chord language, incidentally generating what we might call shimmer chords as well. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the quadrilidian concept. Quadrilidian is kind of what happens when you push Lydian so far that it kind of starts to break. So let's break Lydian. If we envision the Lydian mode topologically, we can see that it forms a closed loop. In other words, we end on the same root note that we started on after one trip around the circle. Double modes, in contrast, end at the same root note after two trips around the circle. You can think of double modes as being limniscate in shape, with octave two displaced in pitch space by a single diasis before returning home after this second pass. We can go around again and get trilydian, which sounds like this. We'll talk about that in depth over on Patreon, but today I wanna to focus on the quadrilidian spiral. This is where Lydian starts to break down and lose cohesion with its intended structure. I mean, just listen. Can we still even hear Lydian inside of it? Maybe yes, maybe no, but one thing is for sure. As we add more progressively flat octaves, the shimmer effect paradoxically diminishes, cloaked in a dense, harmonic fog of this now giant implied polytonal cluster chord. It kind of starts to lose its Lydian-ness, if you know what I mean. So we have to be really careful about how we treat it. And don't worry, I know what you're thinking, Levi, it's a lot of notes. Like, like a lot, a lot of notes. It's so many notes that it might as well just be chromatic 31. So what are we doing here? Well. In my experience, discovery is often made when we test at the extremes. Pushing the harmonic envelope, as it were, can be a really good way to inspire new approaches. It's not just about having the most amount of notes, after all. 
it's how you use them. Likewise, the beauty of the quadrilidian concept isn't in its successive displacement of octaves, it's how we move through them. The function of the notes is what's important here. And that's what I want to explore. Because as it turns out, the quadrilidian concept might be a fascinating vehicle for microtonal modulation. Say you wanted to get from the key of F major to the key of E major. How might you do it? Well, there's any number of options. You could try a tonic by assertion modulation that's literally just going from F major to E major hard stop. If you like to raw dog your key changes, I guess it's a valid option. Maybe we could get a bit more clever and try something like this. But what if we wanted to modulate microtonally? Since quadrilidian contains both F lydian and E lydian within it, you should be able to use it as a modulation tool. You can think of quadrilidian as a kind of spiral spanning the distance of a 12 tet half step from prime root to the last sub root. In other words, we can send any chord progression through our spiral like a slide drifting from the key of F to the key of E via the lydian shimmer effect. How do we do this? Blocking sequences. How do they work? Well, for triadic harmony, there are six options for how we phase from one key to the other. Six ways of moving up or down the spiral based on place directionality and note order. You can break these six sequences down into three sets. Ones that prioritize root movement, ones that prioritize thirds, and those that prioritize the movement of fifths. I know it's a little confusing, but let me show you how one works. Take this two-part looped chord progression. Let's apply one of our blocking sequences to modulate from this F major Lydian-ish sound to an E major Lydian-ish sound using the shimmer effect. This sequence calls for us to move the roots of our progression first. So we'll flatten each of the roots of each of our chords down one chain in the quadrilidian structure. Next, after another half pass of our loop, we'll do the same thing with our thirds, followed by our fifths. This is a good way to modulate half flat, but let's keep going with the same sequence, dropping the roots again, and then our thirds, and finally our fifths. Rinse and repeat, maybe add some sharp 11s along the way to further solidify that Lydian-esque sound, and we'll have managed to drift over eight iterations of the same loop from F major to E major in a new but distinctly Lydian way. An ever-evolving harmony contained within a practically static chord progression. Let's dress up this whole progression a little bit, maybe add some extensions or revoice our chords in a more fashionable way and see what this concept could sound like if we, you know, actually applied it to music. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to mention some of my other observations on this quadrimodal structure that may be helpful to consider. Different blocking sequences will give you different flavors of modulation. If we modulate downward with a sequence from a set that prioritizes thirds, the initial motion will turn our major chords into neutral and our minor chords into subminor chords. Where if we prioritize root movement like we did just a moment ago, we can see that F major shimmers itself down into something like F super major half sharp five and E minor morphs into E neutral half sharp five. I like to think of 
these sequences as a set of roadmaps which helps us ebb and flow through the structure of the spiral in different ways, creating unique patterns, chord structures, and a variety of useful vibes along the way. These blocking sequences are kind of meant more as a general guide for modulation of this style in 31 Tone Equal Temperament, and kind of what I like about them is that it leaves the speed of that modulation up to the composer. The example I just showed you was long and drawn out, mostly just to demonstrate the concept, but you could take this idea to quickly move up or down a few dioceses in a harmonic haze of sorts. For example, At that speed, I doubt any of us would be able to intuitively identify exactly what's happening there, but who knows, that sound might be useful to you in the right context. Here's another one for my jazz nerds out there. How do we treat extensions, like seventh chords? We have our blocking sequences for triads, but what if we have something like C major seven that has four notes? When in the sequence is our seventh degree, B, supposed to modulate? I don't know, and I'm honestly not even convinced that this is something that needs a rule set. The more notes you have in a chord, the more blocking sequences could be generated to accommodate them, but I don't know if that's the right move. To me, extensions are the spice of the chord world, and in the kitchen, I like to spice to taste, not to instruction. Why should music be any different? Maybe our sevenths, our half sharp sevenths, our harmonic sevenths, all the sevenths can be used to thoughtfully smooth out and glue the rest of the modulation together. What do you guys think? I'm open to suggestions. Final observation. Blocking sequences aren't Lydian specific. They'll work with any mode, even chromatically. You could have a quadrophrygian modulation or God forbid, a quadrilocrian modulation if you wanted to. In fact, it's probably more accurate to call this idea the quadrimodal concept. So if you're ever on your compositional journey and you find yourself in 31 Edo and you need a way to modulate to another key in a way that highlights the modal structure that you're already in, this may be a great way to do it. Huge thank you to all of my patrons for making this video and all future videos possible. If you want to try out this quadrilidian modulation yourself, but you don't want to spend the time it takes reprogramming all of your synths to do it, don't worry, I've got you. We've digitized all of these tuning files over on Patreon. So double Lydian, triple Lydian, quadrilidian, all of the Lydians, all synthesized into tuning files you can drag and drop into your synth at home. When you join the Microtonalist tier, you'll get a bunch of extra content like my lecture series on microtonality for the modern musician, as well as extended cuts and early viewings of my upcoming videos, bass lessons, and access to the Microtonalist manual, a comprehensive resource containing everything that you'd ever want to know about making music in 31 Edo. We await you with open arms and of course, a whole lot of notes.